Hi, today I have more Ugreen stuff. Power banks, 100 watt rated power banks. To answer the question in the icon, yes, it can do 100 watts, but not continuously. Neither can the 20 amp hour one. But just because they can't do 100 watts doesn't mean they're bad power banks. To find out how long they can do 100 watts, keep watching. It also means the marketing departments suck and have gotten out of hand just slapping numbers on things that don't mean anything. Like really, is this a 500 watt power adapter? I mean, the outputs don't even add up to 500 watts. I mean, really? Anyway, yeah, power banks, not adapters, will be checked for their energy capacity and charging capacity, as well as charge times, thermals, and general feature sets. It will be really interesting if these power banks are an improvement on other Ugreen offerings, or if they're really just the same as everything else that's out there. There are affiliate links, no, just link, which earn me a couple percent, but cost you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon and will make it to the website eventually. Patrons chose this video. Okay, first up is the 12,000 mAh 100 watt Ugreen power bank. The power bank is a moderate size and has a generous amount of output modes. It comes with a two foot USB cable. It's fine. And a gigantic power user manual. I guess they really wanted to cover the globe, literally in paper. Anyway, it does give some specifications that are welcome. I'd rather just see watt hour figures rather than a bunch of different milliamp figures, but no one, no one does this. It's just throw a plot of efficiency in there, then everyone can figure it out for themselves for their specific use case. So on the energy units, they are rated often in milliamp hours, which is just 1000 for the milli or amp hours. This is half of the equation for energy. The volts times the current amps gives you the power and the hours comes along for the ride. So you get watt hours. You can use this value to calculate the runtime of various devices based on your needs fairly simply. If you need 15 watts, you can check this with one of those USB power meters. You can calculate how long the device will run for. I use the larger one for the example. Okay, inspecting the physical power bank itself, it's the more square shape. It has two USB ports. They offer a fairly wide range of operation modes. It has a ton of logos on it, but I don't see anything that really covers a safety listing for the US market, but I don't really expect that. It's just sometimes they have one, sometimes they don't for power banks. This doesn't mean it's bad. They do regurgitate the user manual information in small text on here to figure out what this thing can do. So what can it do? Well, time to plug it in and run some tests. First, let's test that USB output. The USB port can, in fact, deliver all 100 watts. This isn't bad. It is meeting the claim. Will it do it for very long? No, it won't. More on that in a minute. When you plug in a second port, it does renegotiate. In this case, both ports become 5 volt only ports. So, is it a UPS or uninterruptible power supply? No, it is not a UPS. It will pass power through but it will not source power from the battery directly to the output while plugged into the charger. It also won't charge, so all of the energy through the device comes from the power adapter. It basically deletes itself from the circuit. If you cut power while it is plugged in like this, it will turn off. So it's much less than a UPS, really. If you want the power on the go, which is what it's made for, it does that just fine. The power bank does have a little display on it, and the character it will show will change based on the energy left. It could just leave the percent up, but it's a cute thing, and you can bring it back up with a button press. The power bank does have a low power mode with a press and hold, so you can charge up a watch no problem. Okay, time to look at the stats for this thing. I was able to pull about 50 watts out of this to fully discharge the unit. It did still reset in this mode, and we'll see shortly if this was a thermal issue or if it's just trying to protect the battery. The device can only do 100 watts for seven minutes. It's not a 100 watt power bank. They shouldn't call it that. It's just pushing the batteries further than they need to be pushed. Anyway, after all the testing, it ended up with an efficiency from the wall to the output of about 77%. That's actually not too bad. So if you are charging a phone, you won't lose too much of the energy. Okay, so what about charging time? This device charges pretty slow compared to the advertised value. It really charges at about 30 watts. It will peak up to 45 watts for a bit, but mostly 30 watt charging. This means it takes about an hour and a half to fully charge. There are faster things out there, but it's faster than the basic power banks at least. Thermally, this power bank looks good. 
it didn't really get outwardly hot at all. It looks like the protection conditions are set at a reasonable level, so it is focusing more on the safety of operation and the lifetime of the battery cells than pushing the limits. They still shouldn't call it 100 watts. It says max, but it doesn't in any way give you any information about time. 100 watt max means nothing. It could be for one millisecond, it could be the, for the full depth of discharge of the battery. The max of an AC square wave, 50% duty cycle, is the same as the RMS value, but the average is zero. So writing max doesn't get them off the hook. Next is the 20,000 milliamp hour version. This one is a more conventional flat pack style power bank. It has many similar features to the 12K. Same modes of operation, same USB cable. It does have some functions a little different. The main difference here is that this one adds a USB port and it can also pass through power while charging. So if you don't have enough ports, it can still do things. It does renegotiate on plugs and unplugs. So like the other unit, it cannot function as an uninterruptible power supply because the power turns off when the power goes out. It does take a few seconds though. The physical power bank doesn't look too bad. It has the display on the side, no faces on this one. The same basic markings are included on the power bank. The user manual on this one is smaller, but it does include things I like to see. The infographics for how the power is distributed when multiple ports are being used. If only they could print this on the device, right? Ha. The performance is very similar to the 12K. It has the same issue with the power levels, but at 50 watts it was able to do its thing. The charging on this one does ramp up to the full power level, but it then drops down after a fairly short time to about 30 to 35 watts. It really spends most of the time charging here, which is why this power bank takes a pretty good amount of time to charge. The display is also not too accurate. It says 100%, but then keeps charging for a good while after this. It's why 80% is at an hour and 22 minutes, and then a full charge isn't until two hours and 10 minutes. The display was at 100% for a half hour while it continued charging. In terms of thermals, this power bank stayed nice and cool. It ran for about 18 minutes at 100 watts, but still didn't get too hot in this mode. So it measures and safely shuts down the power bank without overheating anything. I'm calling this mostly a win. In comparing these power banks with a few other options in terms of sizing, it looks like they are different. The ZMI is larger, of course, but it does have more capacity. The Bassius blade is flat, but it's in the name. It better be. The Inu is in the middle, and it's the one that I take with me most of the time, so it's a good comparison as well. The overall energy capacity, these basically look right in line with other Ugreen power bank offerings. They are upper middle range in terms of efficiency, but offer a few options for sizes. The basic specifications don't really tell the story though. The smaller one really only charges at 35 watts or so, and the mid-side one really is the same charge rate. They offer short-term peaks of faster charging, but the larger one basically pulls 60 watts the whole time. In terms of value, these are really not bad options. The pricing puts them very much in line with the Inu offerings, so this is a departure from the overpricing I've seen from Ugreen previously. These are the current prices, but I assume they will basically always be that price or lower. This is a win for value. The density and weight of these are really basically in line with offerings from other manufacturers. The 12K is a bit heavy for the capacity, it's around 350 grams. The square form factor power banks tend to be heavier. The slimmer 20K power bank is about 420 grams, so for the extra battery size, you aren't adding much weight, and this puts it pretty high up the list in terms of energy density per kilogram. In terms of the energy per space or size, there is certainly some air space inside. The power density takes a hit because these can't do that 100 watt figure continuously, and this is how I'm rating these from now on. I'm not going to go with what it can do for 10 minutes and call it a full discharge. So the blade looks good, but remember that only runs for 12 minutes or something, so it's also really like 50 watts. So in line. Okay, so two more power banks. The Ugreen 12K and 20K 100 watt edition. These two power banks don't seem bad at all. The efficiency is quite good. They do achieve some of this by rate limiting them. They may offer short term peak power levels and bursts of faster charging, but they do not hold these values. If the marketing was just more accurate on these, I'd be more likely to recommend them. 
but calling them 50 watt power banks with a 100 watt 7 or 18 minute output is boring. They didn't add the port maximums together either, which is a lost opportunity. These are really 200 watt, no, 500 watt power banks. Jokes aside, they are not bad if you ignore the top level specification, which I am forced to do because it doesn't mean anything. Both are easily airline compliant, they don't get too hot, they aren't too expensive, and in general, when they do a function, they do it within safe limits of the device and shut down appropriately when being abused. I'm not sure you can ask for more from a power bank. I expect these to last a while, and I may try out the 20k in the rotation to see if I run into any issues. The 12k is a bit large physically for the capacity, so it's probably going on the shelf. Let me know if you have one of these and what you think in the comments. I did update the schedule on the All Things website with upcoming videos. I'm sure the schedule's going to slip some. Thanks for watching. Check the description. Goodbye.